Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I've got a, I don't know if you'd call it a conundrum. <laughs> Something I'd like to ask you to help me with. Okay, here's the thing. We know the two commandments that Jesus gave to us. To love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, and with all of our strength. But he said, the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. On these fall all the laws and the prophets. Okay. The other day, my friend and I were discussing my little problem across the hall with the doggy okay <laughs> and she says you know Jesus wouldn't want you to be mistreated like this and just ignored and have it allowed to just go on I said yeah you're probably right he wouldn't so I got to talking to him about this yesterday <laughs> And this is what came to my mind, <laughs> okay? Um, if a man asks of you his cloak, give him your coat also. All right, so I said, okay, so, yeah, if a man steals my coat, my cloak, I'm supposed to go ahead and give him my coat and be standing there in the freezing cold with nothing but a shirt on. And, um, of course, I didn't hear anything, but I was, I knew he was saying, yep. <laughs> okay, so I've been doing some looking up of this scripture versus the Old Testament. <laughs> okay. Now, when you go back to the reference, buddy, for this, buddy, stop, hush. I'm trying to make a video. Now, be quiet. Shh. Oh, my goodness. Buddy. Buddy, stop, stop, stop. <coughs> Somebody's in the hall. Something's going on <coughs> over there. Okay. Um, it takes me back to Exodus <coughs> chapter 21. And when you go to verse 24, it says, Buddy, hush. <coughs> Who? See, I have a very protective dog. <laughs> and he doesn't like to be left alone either. Which is why I don't do much around here unless it's an area where the dog can go, honestly. And people think I'm antisocial. They don't realize I don't like that going on anymore. I don't want that my neighbors putting up with that. He's loud. Okay. Although they're probably at the activity. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, I'd rather be doing this here. I'm trying to get back into it. So, Exodus 21, 23. These are the laws God has given to Moses, okay? Sorry for the barking. Oh, it's verse 24. Um... Well, it's in the middle of a sentence here, so let me back up. All right, it starts with verse 22. If men strive, in other words, two men are fighting, and they hurt a woman with child, so that her fruit depart from her. In other words, she loses the baby. And yet, no mischief follow. Not sure what he means by that. No mischief follow. Could that mean she doesn't die? 
just the baby dies, it says, He shall be surely punished according as the woman's husband will lay upon him, and he shall pay as the judges determine. And if any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life. So he spells that out pretty well. Now, and that's got a comma, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning. Ooh, you burn somebody, you get burned. You burn down their house, they get to burn down yours. Wound for wound, stripe for stripe. And if a man smite the eye of his servant or the eye of his maid, that it perish, in other words, that the eye dies and is useless, he, the owner of the servant, shall let him go free for his eye's sake. So, you hit your servant and he loses his eye, you have to let him go free. And if he smite out his manservant's tooth or his maidservant's tooth, he shall let him go free for his tooth's sake. In other words, God was telling him, don't, don't be hitting your servants so hard that they lose their eyes and their teeth. Or you got to let them go. How about that? Okay, so let's go back into the New Testament. Now, i got to go up here and exit out of that. Now, this started at Matthew 5, 38. Okay, I'm going to switch it. Oh, no, you don't. There's another survey. Ha, even Blue Letter Bible has them connected. Don't fall for them, people. Oh, I got my products, and I've tried them out. When you take the right dose of the sleeping medicine, it doesn't keep me asleep. And it's supposed to have cannabidiol CBD in it. Very little. Okay. Um, there's no way I'm going to pay eighty nine ninety five for a bottle of it. But I'm getting to try it for five something. And this cream was the one for nineteen ninety nine. I'm sorry, I'm getting off track. I know I, why I do that. I just read a great article on MECFS, and that is one of the symptoms. It causes ADD or even ADHD. Anyway, so forgive me for that. Um... I don't even know why I said that. It's broken brain syndrome. <laughs> anyway, uh, ye heard it. Ye have heard. Oh, I know. I was trying to change to NASB. It threw me to the survey, and I uh, you know. All right. It's trying to change. Okay, Matthew five. I gotta back it up one. For you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That's the Old Testament. But I say to you, do not resist an evil person. Would that mean an inconsiderate person? But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, Turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, let him have your coat also. Now in the King James Version it says, If anyone takes your cloak, let him have your coat also. But this is more modern language. Some people might not even know what a cloak is. 
it's the outer coat it's a, a like a blanket you put on over your coat for extra warmth okay so you see it changes it a little but this leaves you stark naked on top <laughs> unless you have a t-shirt on underneath your shirt okay literally a tunic a garment worn next to the body oh if anyone wants to sue you and take your tunic let him have your coat literally cloak an outer garment also uh, whatever if he wants one you're supposed to give him the other one too let's leave it at that if anyone wait a minute moving on whoever forces you to go one mile go with him too now for those of you who don't know or remember me explaining this before the Roman soldiers were allowed to go, come up to your front door, knock on it, throw their equipment in your arms and say, carry this for a mile. They were allowed to make you carry their belongings for a mile because they were tired. Jesus is saying, go with him too. You don't have to normally, but Jesus is saying, go the extra mile. This is must be where the saying comes from. Go the extra mile. Ha! Huh? How about that? It just now came to me. That's what it means. If your boss tells you to move these boxes over here and sweep up this floor, maybe you could go the extra mile and do a little extra cleaning over here you see you get rewarded in the long run it could give you a raise okay moving on give to him who asks of you this is verse 42 now and do not turn away from him who wants to borrow from you if you have it or if he wants to borrow uh your shovel let him bar let him borrow it and you say you might think well i remember i loaned him a such and such he never did return it well ever hear of walking over there and saying hey neighbor are you through with my shovel yet i need it see i've loaned stuff and didn't get it back but did i bother to go ask for it no so I was out the item. That was my fault. I could have went to the neighbor's house and said, could I please have my radio back now? See? So take a little responsibility and if you loan something to somebody and they don't bring it back, go in two days and ask for it back. Because there's no law against it. He's just telling you to loan it. Y'all can tell me your opinion on that if you wish. Verse 43. You have heard it. You have heard that it was said. You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven for he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven Ha! Ah, let's read that one again. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father or daughters 
of your Father who is in heaven. For he causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Only the Father knows who's going to end up repenting and turning to him eventually. Verse 46 For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? Remember, this is Jesus talking. If you greet only your brothers... What more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? See, okay, I don't know what that was about, but that was weird. Okay, um, oh gosh, you interrupted me. Oh, do, do y'all remember me, me saying that I had heard it said that Matthew was written to the Jews and Luke to the bride and Mark to the rest of the church? I believe that's right. Matthew, Mark, Luke. And John, I guess, is for everybody. It's the book of love. It just tells us all about Jesus and how much he's so full of love and loves us. But doesn't it make sense when you're reading Matthew, uh, what is it, 24, when he talks about the end days, and, and it's so confusing because it says that after that time of tribulation, then I shall come. So people are all post-trib, post-trib rapture. But then what about pray that you may be counted worthy to escape? That's in Luke. Okay, so right here he's saying... Do not even the Gentiles do the same? See, the word has not been yet taken to the Gentiles. Paul was brought on board for the Gentiles. And I think eventually others, of course, Paul couldn't do it all. So if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? You could say, do not even the heathen do the same? Do not even the unbelievers do the same? Yeah. They greet their brothers. They greet those they love. But just snub their nose at those they don't like. Their enemies. Strangers even. Therefore, you are to be perfect. As your heavenly Father is perfect. Jesus is saying it. He's not saying, I suggest that you try your very best to be perfect. Because your heavenly Father is perfect. He is saying, you are to be perfect. Well now, we might say, Jesus, you know that we can't be perfect. We're all human. We can start making excuses all day long. The point is, when you slip up and you know what you just did or said is certainly falling short of being perfect, you repent. This is another example of why we got to repent. Because we're not perfect. And grace is there for us when we say, Lord, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me for saying that to her or him or for doing that or for, for failing to do that. I should have helped that person. And he will, if you mean it, he'll forgive you. And there is grace abundantly 
if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that is how we stay pure. Here, I'll look that up. Let me get a new file and go to Google. That's how I have to do it. If we confess, here we go. It's 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from, well, this says purify us from all unrighteousness. That's the New Living Translation. 1 John 1, 9. And I don't think for a moment that means only at the point of when we accept Jesus as our Savior. It certainly means then too. If you confess your sins at the point of salvation, when you're becoming born again, we actually get our salvation when we cross over, whether it's through death or rapture, that's when you're saved, to be honest, because you can walk away. Many people have done it. They have turned away. They have backslidden. Okay? And they're living in sin and not repenting of it. They gave up for a while. Although I've never given up, I've certainly been far from perfect. Always loved the Lord. Always read my word at least some days a week, went to some kind of church, well, except when I was separated or divorced. I hated going to church when I was not with a man to sit with me, and that was wrong. I don't know why. I tried it. I tried going to this one church without a guy, and I went. It was because they had a divorce recovery group. So I started going to the Sunday things, too. Next thing I know, they're knocking on my front door wanting me to sign a pledge card because I forgot to do it in church. No, I didn't forget. I'm just not pledging money that I don't know that I will have for the next two years. You know... I understand churches wanting to enlarge and wanting to add to their fine buildings a youth center. It's good to keep the youth in church. But look what everything's turned into. Most of the time, them youth centers just get them playing basketball together while their family's in church. Anyway, don't get me started. That's a whole nother sermon. I'm going to end this here. I hope that I made myself clear. <sighs> that no, let me summarize. As my friend said, Jesus wouldn't want you to be anybody's doormat. He wouldn't want us to be used or taken advantage of. He did say, love your neighbor as yourself. But if they want our coat, we're supposed to give them our cloak also. So that's kind of a conundrum, is it not? Do I... Day and lose sleep, which affects my brain. I thought about taking Buddy out again four times a day so I don't have to have that schedule of sleep and just try to sleep after they get back from lunch. I'm praying about that. 
And then I would return anybody who donated for moving through that thing I had on Facebook. I don't know how, but I could figure it out somehow. They don't give me a phone number to call, but there's got to be a way. The point is, I'm not sure how to take this situation in, in light of all these verses. Yes, I could stay here and save $110 a month, but, um, It would be tight, but it would be great to have more room. You should see my place. It's all steps. It's all steps. Bless his heart. He won't use them. Any advice would be most welcome. All right, I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and over the internet connection and over each and every one of you and your devices and my computer and all of our families and all of our homes. Keep them evil demons away. You say it every night too, okay? Plead the blood of Jesus over you, your family, your pets, your homes. The blood of Jesus is powerful and was shed for remission of sins. But I'm telling you, whether it's in the Bible or not, it repels demons. They hate it. It's the blood of the Lamb. It kept out the angel of death. If you want to need a biblical reference, right there. They applied the blood to their doors back before the Exodus. And the angel of death passed over their homes. So right there's a reference. If you have to have one. And what's the harm of saying it? Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus over my house. From top of the roof to the bottom of the basement. From north to south. From east to west. To protect my home from harm and evil. I plead the blood of Jesus over all electronics and mirrors. If you don't believe demons can come through there, look it up. Do some research. You will find it, and I'm sure, in plenty of places. I don't get it. I still don't get it. I don't understand how they can come through mirrors. I do know that when I was living with a woman who was married to the Satanist that I ended up dating, that's how she and I met, our children were best friends. And we ended up living together. And she told me. She covers her. She would cover her mirror every night with a towel. And I used to think. That's kind of weird. Why does she do that? And she knew. He could see her through that. And she didn't want him watching her. So, okay, there you go. If you're married to a Satanist for 10 years, you learn some things. I only dated him for a little bit, and I learned a whole lot from living with her and dealing with her white witch friends. Yes, I did. This stuff is real. Our spiritual warfare is real. Learn Ephesians chapter 6 and do it daily. I plead the blood of Jesus over all my 
the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the girdle of truth, my shoes of peace. I take up my shield of faith so I can extinguish the fiery darts of the enemy. I take up my sword, which is the very word of God, quick to divide the I go through all the motions, man. Quick to divide the lies from the truth like bone from marrow. And having done that, I will pray in the spirit at all times with all manners of prayers and petitions and for all the saints. And then I do pray in the spirit. If you cannot, keep asking. Keep asking. Fast and pray if you have to. Fast for it. Push. Persevere. Tell the Lord, I want to be more powerful in my prayer life too, Lord. Why can't I have that gift? And if you just plain out don't care about it, well, you may end up dealing with that when you face him. I don't know. I just know we're better off knowing how to do it. Okay? All right. I'll end it here. I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.